to uh, First United Methodist Church of Richlands Bible Study. We're beginning this study, and I'm so grateful that uh, you are joining us. Uh, I'm Pastor Gordon McBride, and uh, I'm just happy that you have uh, decided to join us. We're doing a Bible study on Habakkuk, or, or Habakkuk, uh, uh, however you want to pronounce it. And you, it's legal to do both, so if, if however you want to do it, but for uh, my taste, I've always said Habakkuk, but uh, we're going to be looking at the, the book of, of uh, Habakkuk, the prophet Habakkuk. It is three whopping chapters long. And so uh, we're going to look at this. And, and I think when we do get it into all the, the particulars of, of Habakkuk, it can speak volumes to us today. Um, and it can speak volumes to us about our relationship with God and God's relationship with us. But as we begin, I always like to do this because anything worth doing well is, is worth asking the Holy Spirit to anoint it. So would you bow with me in a word of prayer? Father God, we just ask for your Spirit to be upon us. I'm grateful for your Word. I'm grateful for the Word that you give us. It's your inspired Word. I thank you for the, the people that you gave the, the message to and the ones that has wrote this for our edification and for our, our exhortation. And, and so, Lord, inspire us, and challenge us um, to be the people you would have us to be. And as we go through this study, bring new meaning to Scripture. Uh, open our eyes, open our hearts um, to your will and your purpose. And we ask this in the name of Christ our Savior, amen. And while I'm uh, talking about this, I, I want you also to remember all of those folks that uh, in, uh, in the path of Ida and also uh, in Afghanistan, uh, um, Haiti, uh, those dear folks in central Tennessee, and uh, also uh, uh, all of our COVID uh, cases. And, Remember those who are in their nursing homes, their assisted living, those in the hospital, all the caregivers, and also um, our first responders. So Habakkuk wrote this somewhere between 609 and 589 B.C. Um, I think it's important to, to note the date because as you go on into some of the other prophets like Nehemiah and Ezra, Obadiah and even Isaiah, you, you get a feel as you look at the dates and you can kind of um, put it in chronological order. But um, here is just a little background. We're going to get more into it as we go. But the prophet Habakkuk uh, is called by God to give the people a message, to warn the people of Judah of their coming judgment. Uh, now, why were were they being given the judgment by God? Well, some of the people of Judah, but especially Judah's king, and then primarily Judah's king, Jehoiakim, and his cronies uh, have committed apostasy. They have committed bribery and oppression, and they really oppressed the, the people. And so out of this, you know, when God uh, speaks to Habakkuk, Habakkuk enters a dialogue with um, uh, God, and ask God, and because he wants to know, God, why are you allowing these people to prosper and escape judgment? Why have you not done something? Basically, that's what he's saying. Why have you not done something about it? But this is just the tip of the iceberg. And, and God has much, much more planned for Judah that Habakkuk uh, knows nothing about. But God is soon going to reveal to um, um, Habakkuk and to Judah, um, and which when he does to Habakkuk, it just bring, causes fusion, uh, further grief to Habakkuk. 
Not only that, but there's a further complaint that Habakkuk makes to God. So um, I want you to think about this. We see God as fair, God as good, God as wise. And when life goes sideways, and life is, let's face it, is hard at times. And when life is hard, we humans uh, aren't very pleased, to say the least. So before you <clears throat> get down on Habakkuk's case, because he's uh, complaining to God, I want us to think about what we do, but we, because we don't always understand why God does everything that God does, or what God allow, why God allows certain things to happen, uh, but we can be assured um, that God loves us. We can be assured that God loves us unconditionally, and, and loves us in our joys, loves us in our trials, loves us in our misunderstanding, loves us in our complaining even. And God has the ultimate plan for our lives and his eventual deliverance to the faithful. You know, we can never forget God always loves and cares for us even in the most difficult times. Now, as we get into this, the very first verse of Habakkuk chapter 1 says this, the prophecy that Habakkuk the prophet received. Now, I, I like um, in other translations, in, in, in RSV, uh, it, the oracle, the oracle that the prophet Habakkuk saw. Now, the NRSV says saw. The NIV says received. I just read you out of the NIV. And that's what I'm going to be reading out of the NIV. But think about an oracle. Um, an oracle is a person, especially in, in ancient Greece, a, a priestess to whom a deity is believed to speak. In this case, you know, our, the oracle comes from the deity God to Habakkuk. Now, basically, this verse introduces the book by telling us this is God's revelation to Habakkuk and to the people of Judah. Why does it say that? Because I think that God wanted us to know, wanted the people of Judah to know, this is God's word. This is not something Habakkuk came up with, but this is God's word to Habakkuk. So, I want to read from verse 2 to verse 11. We probably won't get to all of those, but we'll try to get as much as possible. How long, Lord? Now, this is Habakkuk. This is his complaint to the Lord. How long, Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen? Or cry out to you violence, but you do not save? Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing, destruction, and violence? are before me, there is strife and conflict abounds. Therefore, the law is paralyzed and justice never prevails. The wicked him in the righteous so that justice is perverted. So let's stop right there. Now that's, that's the first four verses. And that is Habakkuk complaint to God. Now, in the book of Habakkuk, it is divided into two arguments or two complaints and two responses by God and concludes with a prayer of Habakkuk and an acknowledgement. I'm not going to tell you what the acknowledgement is just yet. The first 11 verses are really the first 10, the first 10 verses is Habakkuk's first argument with God and God's response. Yes, I get my tongue tied sometimes, but praise be to God, y'all just pray for me and we'll keep on trucking and you stick with me, all right? Now let me ask you a question. Have you ever argued with God? Now, when first, when I first posed this question, I think most everyone's reaction and my reaction would be 
No. I'm not going to argue with God. I'm not going to jeopardize myself by arguing to God. Besides, who can win against God? Yet, do we not do it? And of course we do. All of us argue with God and are complaining to God because how many of us have said, and this is the first, and if I would ask you, what is Habakkuk's complaint? And that's in the verse two. What is his complaint? And, and I think the way that we need to look at that complaint is how long? Now, the whole thing is, uh, how long must I call for help? But you do not listen. But how long? How many of us have said, how long? How long? I mean, we've been asking that for uh, the last year and a half. How long is this COVID going to last? Now that we're back to mask and now that cases are rising, we was again? I mean, we we took shots for this. But how long? How long is this going to go on? How long? And I don't care what trial or, or tribulation that you're going through. You're going to ask at some point in time, how long? And you ain't going to complain to God. You know, God... And it may be in a prayer or something like it's God, you know, I, I, I've come to you and I've come to you and I've come to you. Just kind of like Habakkuk is saying, how long must I call for help? You know, God, I've been asking and asking and asking. For years I've been asking. But it doesn't seem like it's, you're, you're really listening to what I'm saying. And it's not that we're being flippant or that... We don't love God. It's not that we question, and we are questioning God, but to, to the sense of, of putting God in question of, are you really able to do anything, God? But what we're saying is, you know, we're not really, I guess the best word I could say for that, we're not committing apostasy. <laughs> but in reality, we're asking because we humans don't know. And we live, and then yes, we're supposed to, to walk by faith, but deep inside of us, there is a nagging and there's a longing to know how long. We want to know how long, God. How long is this going to take? So Habakkuk begins with this complaint, and it's a commonplace lament. I mean, he's, he's lamenting, God, how long? And, and, you know, through difficult times, it's just common for us to say, how long? How long? Now, I want you to know something about a typical lament, such as often found in the book of Psalms. And if you go through, and I want you to read the Psalms and just notice something. Usually a Psalms or a typical lament consists of a typical question, how long? Like David would say, and he would tell God, my enemies are up on me. I mean, God, they are... They are chastising me. How long will you allow my enemies to accost me? And then it would be combined with an additional ailment such as, you know, these are the atrocities inflicted upon me, uh, upon the nation. And then the typical lament then would include a confession and a trust in God. Uh, and then a cry, a petition to God to intervene on, uh, in, intervene on behalf of that person or the nation and usually concludes with a vow of praise and anticipation of God's help. And so let's look, at, let's look at David. How long? This is what my enemies are doing to me. How long, God, are you going to be silent? My enemies are doing this. They, they are coming against me. They're, you know, they, they're like a pack of dogs. And, but I, know, I realize, God, that in the past you have helped me out. I praise you for being there for me. I praise you that you have always intervened. And so now, God, I ask that once again, as you have done in the past, to intervene upon my behalf. That's a typical lament. That's not Habakkuk's lament. 
Habakkuk is just saying to God, yo, dude, hello, when are you going to do something? When are you going to act on my behalf? Why aren't you doing something? Look at all the atrocities that Judah has had to face. Look at all that's been inflicted upon the people of Judah's uh, and, and, and notice in this petition that Judah, I mean, Habakkuk doesn't petition per se for God to intervene because he is saying to God, look, you should have already done something. How are you allowing Jehoiakim and all his cronies to keep doing what they're doing? So that's it in a nutshell. I'm going to stop right there for this study because we're going to get into next week, we're going to get into identifying all the Habakkuk's complaint. And I would, um, I would really like to, to get into it, but I will say this. You know, we haven't got into the, the heart of the matter and, and what has Habakkuk so been out of shape. And, and to get at the heart of this book, we need to understand what has Habakkuk so been out of shape? I like to use that. And, and basically there's one specific problem and, and it is what God is allowing to happen and what God is, do, is not doing on behalf of Judah and in, in Habakkuk's mind. And so the specific problem stems from two sources and we'll get into that next week. So may God bless you. And this day in this study, please join us again next week because we're going to get into the greater depth of what is going on in Judah, what has got Habakkuk so up in the papers, as the old saying goes, and why he is so out of sorts with God. And that's the only way we can say he's out of sorts. But we're going to look at that and why he is saying, you know, the law is paralyzed, Justice never prevails. The wicked seem, uh, um, uh, the wicked him in the righteous. And I'm, I'm going to take that, and I, and I don't want to get into that until I can, because in each one of those, I want to dissect it uh, individually. And, and that takes about an hour to dissect. So we're going to get in that, and then we're going to hear what uh, the Lord God says and see how well Habakkuk likes that. So may God bless you and keep you. May God add his blessings upon you. And please be safe. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Mm -hmm.